All right. You can look at it right here. Get out of here. I have authority. Alright, does everybody have a review packet? Okay, so here is the deal. We're not going to get through all of it. We're going to do as much as we can. Okay? The ones in the back look really, really awful. Like, oh my god, where'd that come from? Well, they're in your homework. They're actually way easier than they look because they're just numbers, they're not proof. So if you know stuff about things, you'll be good to go. For instance, those are both radii, right? Yes, yes sir. And radii connect at 90 degree angles, so that's a 90 degree angle. So now I have two right triangles. I can do p tag to find out what this is. Okay? Uh -oh. Oh. It's really not that bad. Okay? I will go through it online. What's tomorrow? Okay? Tomorrow is the quiz. It's the sixth. Today's the okay. okay? What you want to focus on is the ones that you uh, know the best. Okay? Try those ones in the back as best as you can. So let's get started. Before I get started on this one, I'm going to draw your attention to my goal here. You don't have to do this. This is a really crazy goal to get from this, but I think it becomes more obvious if I arrange this first just to show you what's going on here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this like a number, okay? When I divide by a number, how do I move that over? Multiplication, right? So I treated B minus D like a number. I wrapped it in parentheses, called it a quantity, right? So I'm allowed to rewrite this as this. Totally valid, okay? I just moved the whole thing over by multiplication. How would I move it back? Division, right? There's multiplication. <coughs> okay? So my goal is a little more clear now. What I want to do is find out what A is and find out what C is. And then when I subtract them, this should appear somehow, right? Because we know this is going to be true. So I'm going to find out what A is and what C is. And I can do that from here, right? I've got a bunch of equal signs. I can find A and C. Now, ideally, I want A to equal something with E, F, B, and D in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first and the third guy here, A over B and E over F, and I'm going to get them together. Because when I move that B over, I'll have A equals something with B, E, and F in it. And that gets most of my letters, right? Yep. I'll do the same thing with C. When I move the D over, I'll have C equals something with D, E, and F in it, which covers all the other letters, right? So I'm going to get A on its own and B on its, or C on its own. Here's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so this is my goal, and then once I get there, I'll just move it back, and I win. Okay? So I'm going to write what they gave us, just so you can see it. And I'm going to get A on its own first. Again, I want it where I have B, D, E, and F together. If I move the B over to here, then I have everything but D, right? So I'm going to take these two. How do I move that B over? Totally. Multiplication, right? Now, for a fraction, <laughs> multiplication happens in the top and division happens in the bottom, right? So when I multiply B over, it's going to go to the top, because that's where multiplication goes, right? So I know that A will equal B, E over F. Okay, I just multiply the B over to the E. I'm going to do the same thing with C. How do I get to C on its own? Multiply by D. And multiplication in fractions happens in the top, so I get D, E over F. Cool. Congrats. See how I have almost all my letters, right, in one of these? When I combine those, I'll get all the letters I want. B, E, D, and F. They'll all show up. So now I know what A and C are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract those, and then this should pop out somehow after messing with that. Okay? So what is A minus C? Well, A minus C is going to be the same thing as this minus this, right? Yep. So I'm going to write that. Then you put it together. Cool. And I'm going to prove that that gets this. Now, before I do this, I want to show you what's happening here. Common denominators, right? Mm -hmm. If I had example problem, okay, you don't need to write this. Example problem. If I have something like, um, let's do this. Let me write it first. I'm going to get this. And that's totally fine. If I had something like 3 quarters minus 1 quarter, wouldn't I keep the denominator and subtract the numerators? Yeah. Right? So I'm going to keep the denominator and subtract the numerators. <coughs> totally valid, right? They have the same denominator. I can do that. Now to get this to look like this. I need E and F to be on their own and B and D over on the side, right? So what I'm going to do is this, and it's going to look weird, because in middle school they didn't teach you this part of algebra, and I think it's because you couldn't handle it. This is called pulling out. It's a valid strategy only in math. Did you say pulling out? That's, yep. that's what it's called. It so notice, only in math. Right. So check it out. Distribution, right, if I were to go backwards, so E times B minus E times D gets me there, right? Totally cool, right? E, B, I wrote B, the same thing. ED, right with the subtraction side of the wall. 
totally valid to go backwards, right? The undo of that is called pulling out, right? Just like multiplying and division, they cancel each other, and addition, subtraction, distribution, and pulling out are opposites. This so I pulled out an E from both. You okay? should talk about pull out that must go. Oh my, wow. Good That's job, That's a fifth in the whole game. All right, so. Wow. Nice. What? Flopper, are you good? All right, so now I'm really close, right? And I'm going to show you that going from here to here is totally fine. Why can't you just flip those in the process? You do not need to. So right now is not the time for hypothesis. Right now is I'm going to show you how it's done. If you have questions about how it's done, you can ask. Hypothesis Damn. is for class time, not repeat time. Okay. So taking your best guess, that's class time. So going from here to here is fine. And I'll prove that to you. Again, don't have to do this. Let's pick some numbers. Let's do like 3, 2 minus 1 over 4, right? Oh, good, though. Are we cool with that? I just plugged in some numbers. Cool. I'm showing you that it would work. What's 2 minus 1? 3, 0, 1. What's 1 times 3? <laughs> 3. And what's 3 divided by 4? 3 fourths. Right? Now, this should be the same. If I didn't screw up, right? Right? If that's allowed, this should be the same thing, right? So what's 2 minus 1? One. What's one times three quarters? One and three quarters. No, one times three quarters. Anything times one is itself, right? Three quarters. Oh, so totally legal, right? <laughs> what I did is I said, look, this is all multiplication and division, Dang. right? It's okay. So I can do the multiplication first and then divide, or I can do the division first and then multiply. Doesn't matter. You can do multiplication and division anywhere you want. So I did the division first, e over f, and then I multiplied by b minus. Totally fine. And notice now I'm here, right? Now, how did I get from this to this? What did I do? How did I get from there to there? You multiplied it. I multiplied it over. So how would I move it back to get here? Divide. I divide it, right? So from here to get what I really want, right? I'm going to divide by b minus d. You can get this. Because you divided it. To put it back where you yep. it. Yeah, now you don't have to do this part up here. I was just showing you that that's going to be my goal and that's why. Because once I get this, I can just go back to what I really want, right? So you don't need any of the brown, okay? We just want to get to there. So your goal is going to be to find out what A and C equal. And then when you know what the equal, subtract them, right? And then do math to get them like this. How do you know B and B equal 1? Say again? How do you know B and B equal 1? I don't know the equal. Where are you seeing the one? Well, you said two minus one. Oh, I plugged in random numbers to show that it's the same thing even when I rearrange it, right? If it works with numbers, it should work with letters. You so see what I'm saying? Automatically, b minus b cancels into one and then I'll be yeah. No, no, no. I could have chosen different numbers. Like, I could have done five and two, right? What's five minus two? Three. What's three times three? Nine. Nine divided by four is nine quarters. What's five minus two? Three. What's three times three quarters? Nine quarters, right? So, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just showing that that works. You don't need to show any of this. So for my case, I probably won't remember how to do this on the test. So could I like put in numbers and then substitute the numbers for letters when I get it how I want it to be? No. So what I showed you over here wasn't a proof. It was just showing you that it should be okay, right? I'm showing you laws of algebra in a an example real quick. Now, will it work for all numbers? I didn't prove that, right? So you have to go straight with letters, okay? A proof has to be letters, because it has to be for any number, right? And that's what letters represent. Yes? How Good question. How would you go from, like, the top um, equation to A plus B over F? From this to this? Yeah. Okay. So I just took these two and moved over the B. Why oh, those two, though? Okay. Um, well, I want to find out what A and C equal so that I can subtract them, and then this will pop okay, up. Okay, so that would leave the C alone and wouldn't move it anywhere. Right. So I'm going to do this and get A on its own, and I'm going to do this and get C on its own. I want E and F to be in there as well, though. So I chose E and F to move, right? Because I need E and F here. Is that OK? okay. Now, if this were the first time I was explaining this, I'd be much more thorough of why you wanted that. Wait, because you were just trying to move B to get A by itself. Yep, and just moving the D to get C by itself. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, it's For your steps, uh, is it steps three and four, can you just make the, do you have to do uh, Middle fingers at, can you just do 8 minus C equals B, E minus D? Do you have to do that next step? Step Chance. before? You can go straight from here to here if you want. All right. 
That's fine. That's, That's fine. Mm -hmm. Just make sure your algebra is solid. You'll be okay. Again, notice I didn't write any theorems here. It's all by algebra. If it was first semester, we'd be like, oh, multiplication property of equality, right? And stuff like that. I don't need that. Okay. Let's move on to number two. Notice lemma. Two isn't on here, the thing where if the heights are the same, then the areas are proportional. Is that on the test? That's all you have to do. No, that. only things that are on the test will be things on the review guide. Not everything on the review guide will be on the test. I have to make a quiz still, right? Okay. But these are the possible things that can be on it. I mean on the quiz, that's what I'm Oh, who has yep. to stay at five? This feels like it's a long time. What? This feels like it's a long time. Hey, it was two weeks. This is why when we don't have a quiz oh, on a Friday, oh. you need to go, oh, no. Oh, not oh yes. Yeah. Right? Um, oh, right. Oh. All right, so here's my logic. I'm going to prove that if these guys are concurrent, and they are, right, they all intersect with G, then if I go around the triangle with how they're divided up, right, how these lines divide up my triangle, they'll all multiply to 1. Okay, I'm going to prove that. Okay, Mac. What? This is where the words confuse me. And, like, how to, like, name what. Like, so what's your question? What the G means. So G is just the point where they all intersect, right? So this concurrent means they all intersect at one point. That's all. OK. It's not given a specific Whoa. name. No, it's just a point. Just like A is just a point, B is just a point, right? E is just okay, a point. OK, but G is where they all meet. Yep. Capital letters are points. Little letters are variables, so they stand for a length, right? OK, so why is the red, the the red line there? Uh, I'm about to explain that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that, look, these two triangles, A, C, D, and B, C, D, have the same height, right? And we learned from our second lemma that if they have the same height, then their areas will be proportional to their bases. Cool. So I'm going to write this. And again, that's a lemma. You don't have to tell me why. It's just true. Right? We proved that earlier, but we don't have to do that on the quiz. The area of this triangle, A, C, D, right, will be proportional to this triangle's area, right? Because they both have the same height. And that's triangle B, C, D. You guys still with me? No, concurrent, not congruent. Oh, it's just concurrent. This triangle and this triangle, their areas will be proportional to their bases because they have the same height. Wait, why are we choosing these two? Well, I'm using these two to start out with because they're the easiest to see. So these two triangles have the same height, right? So they're going to be proportional to their bases, A and B. Do you see how A, C, D has base little a and B, C, D has base little b? Now, there's another set of triangles, and I'm going to squeeze this in down here because I'm writing in marker, sorry. There's another set of triangles that have A and B as their bases and have the same height. If you look, right, these two triangles, this triangle here and this triangle here have the same height, right? Which means their areas would be proportional to their bases, which are A and B. So I'm going to write that this green triangle, so the area of triangle A, B, G, will be proportional to the area of the light green triangle, B, G. I try to write in alphabetic order as much as possible because things are going to cancel, and things cancel when they're the same. And sometimes it's hard to tell when things are the same if they're out of order, right? And so now we go based off the bases. Yep, it's going to be equal to A, B, right? That's why I wrote the equal sign there. It's equal to so the lemma is if you have the area, you can get the base. Pretty much, yeah. The, if, the, if the heights are the same, then their areas will be proportional to the bases. And you don't have to prove that. We proved that earlier in the week, sure. two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, don't we have a fraction equaling a fraction equaling a fraction? Isn't that yeah. just like this guy? C. Right? So that says that we can take two of those fractions and subtract them in that weird way, and we'll get the third, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these two. We already have AB. That's what we need. Yes, that's right. And I'm going to show you in a second. These two, we're going to subtract them, OK? And it's going to get us AB. Again, we already have AB, but we got to mess with it a little bit, and I'll show you why. Dark blue from what? Dark green? Mm hmm. All right, because they're both on top. Yep, so I'm allowed to take the two top parts. Uh, triangle, ADG. And area, triangle BCD. Right? So I can take those two and subtract them, and I'll still get A over B. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? I ask that a lot in calculus it used to be. You don't think about what things mean as much. So ACD, that's this big triangle, right? 
and I'm subtracting this guy. So what's left over? This triangle. So another way of saying this is really just this triangle, right? So I'm going to write that. But Area of that triangle, triangle ACG. What's your question? That was my question. Like, is it the small triangle? Like, what, like what triangle guy. are you naming? ACG. Are those two small triangles? And this, this triangle, right, minus the green here, the light green, is going to leave me this guy. What triangle is that? CGB. CGB. I'm going to do BCG for alphabetical. Can you mark those? No. Because no. I'm going to have to do other stuff later, and it's going to cross over. This will be good enough. I promise. Right. We'll see it. Okay? I trust you. Now, I'm going to do the same dumb thing for CDE and EF, right? The same dumb thing. So by similar logic, I'm just going to jump to that, okay? The same dumb thing. So why am I doing this? Well, it turns out that this triangle we just proved um, goes, I'm sorry, this triangle right here goes with A, and this triangle right here goes with B. But we're also going to prove that this triangle right here also goes with B, and it goes with C. So there's going to be overlap now. And because there's overlap, things are going to cancel, OK? We're going to have multiple, we're going to use these letters a lot more, and they're going to cancel. And that's going to get us one. And we have to write them all out. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of alphabet soup, but it's not hard. It's just a lot of writing. So let's do the same thing. C and D, big triangle for C is this guy, right? Yes. And if I subtract the bottom guy, right, what's left over is this, all that green, right? So that's going to go with C. And by the same logic, this will go with D. Are we cool with that? Yep. So by similar logic, by similar logic, this triangle, that's triangle ABG, is going to be proportional to this triangle, ACG. See how we used ACG again? And notice it's on the bottom, right? Top and bottom will cancel when we multiply. This triangle, yeah. right? Because big guy goes with C, little guy goes with C, what's left over is going to go with C. Right. Yes, Jenna? Um, what is the word between by and logic? Similar, or same oh, dumb okay. logic if you want. And this will go with D, right? A, C, G goes with D. Same thing for E and F, right? Big triangle goes with E, and big triangle here goes with E, and they have the same height, right? So they're going to be proportional to E and F. These guys have the same height, the two triangles here that I haven't marked in, right? They're going to have the same height and go with E and F. What are big triangles minus little guys? These two guys. Do you see them? Big triangle here minus little guy there gives me this. Big triangle here minus little guy there gives me this. So these two are going to go with E and F. Okay. Oh, okay. So hold on, hold A, B, G. Hold on one second. I'll answer your question in a second. A, B, G over B, C, G. equals E over F. Again, make sure you match them up. A, B, G. I think I screwed it up, actually. Yeah, A, B, G goes with F. My bad. You guys see that? A, B, G goes with F. Yeah. And B, C, G is going to go with E. Yeah, be careful. I'm glad I made that mistake, actually. Are you talking about, like, F as, like, a mistake? Little F, yep. Little F. Lowercase. Okay. Cool. So, now I know what A over B, C over D, and E over F are. I'm going to have to flip it, but it's okay. So now I'm ready to multiply because look, when I multiply, things are going to cancel. Do you see how ACG is on top and bottom? ACG divided by ACG will be what? One. What's ABG? This will be flipped. <laughs> divided by ABG. One. This will be flipped, remember, so it'll be on top, top and bottom. It'll multiply to one, right? So let me write that. A over B times C over D times E over F. I'm going to prove it equals one. A over B, we said it was this guy, right? Area of triangle A, C, G. And we said area of triangle B, C, G. Can you slow down a little bit? I will pause at the end so you can write. Next up, C over D, right? That's this guy. So I'm going to write that. Times E over F. i got to be careful. i got to flip this, right? So I'm going to write this guy. <coughs> substitution, right? Okay. But it's second semester, so we don't have to write substitution. We're considering that algebra. Okay. Good question. So, if you notice, multiplication in the top, division in the bottom, right? 
What's ACG divided by ACG? What's ABG divided by ABG? So you see why alphabetical is important? If that said ABG and this said GBA, I might not realize that they're the same, right? So if you realize they're the same, that's fine, right? But be careful, you might get tripped up if you don't write alphabetical. And then look, same thing top and bottom, right? When I'm multiplying, that means divide, right? Top and bottom. Yes. So, so what's 1 times 1 times 1? 1. And what's 1 times 1 times 1? 1. So I have 1 over 1, which is 1. 1. So therefore, this equals 1, and I win. Yep. If you want to take a picture, go ahead. Okay, I need to, right? Mm-hmm. How do you get the area of the triangle to equal the letters? That's what I'm thinking. This thing? That was a... Where you're like, uh, equals A equals B. Yeah. Here? So, so go from here to here. But I, I don't get how you correspond the area of the triangle to a letter of the side. Okay, so are we talking about this? You're confused about this. Start with that, yeah. Okay. There's a lemma that proves that's true. If their heights are the same, then the area goes into yeah, the I basis, that. right? So, and then we had our other lemma, the one we proved earlier, that we can take these two and subtract them and get this still, right? Yeah. What's, what's left over when we subtract? This. What's left over when we subtract? This. What's left over when we subtract? This. I just did the same thing for all so the other So are you getting the letters? No, I, under, I understand the area of the triangle letters. I understand like equals F equals F. Oh, F. this? Getting, Is that what you're asking about here? No, I, I get how to do it. I just don't get like the letters that you're getting, like the order and where a, everything B, goes. A, B, C, D, F, E. Are you getting them from the question, the proof, the question? Mm -hmm. or are you getting them from the triangle? Well, he said that E and F are supposed to be switched. So I took A, B, C, D, and E and F from here, right? And I know I want to prove that they equal one. So I just took that, right? And now I'm going to prove that it equals one. Right, you can take random numbers and multiply them together whenever you want, right? I'm going to prove that it equals 1. How? Because I know A over B is this, and I know C over D is that, and I know E over F is this. And look, they all do become 1, right? So you just need to know, this is what I want. Once I know what A over B, C over D, and E over F are, it's time to multiply and prove that they're 1, all right. okay? Okay, now I have a question. All right. So when do we know when these, like the smaller triangles or the bigger triangles? Well, for this proof that somebody came up with, right, this is an easy way to prove that. You need to know how the proof works, right? You need to know that big triangle goes at the base, big triangle goes at the base. Okay, they have the same if you line. go to the next one, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, go to, go. So go on number three? Yeah. Okay, so you have to try to figure out, so we have to go like one at a time, so we have to try to figure out what A, B equals. A over B equals, right? Trust me, it's okay. It's okay. What? So we have to try to figure out what A over B equals. Yep. Yeah? More or less, yeah. Okay. So we try, when you try to figure out what A equals, Oh, there's, oh, shit, never mind. All right, so we're going to prove Siva's theorem. Siva's theorem that says that, um, can you scoot it down? yes, I will. Hold on. I've, I've lost my mind. This is Siva's theorem's converse. So Siva's theorem's converse, right? Siva's theorem says if they're concurrent, then they multiply to 1, right? That's what we just proved. The converse says if they multiply to 1, then they're concurrent. So didn't we just use Siva's theorem to prove that? We didn't use Siva's theorem, we proved Siva's theorem, right? Things just happen to cancel and equal one, which proves Siva's theorem. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this is true, that the way this triangle is divided up, A over B times C over D times E over F all multiply to one, okay? And we're going to prove that actually that CBN right there does go through G. It is concurrent in G. And it also equals one. And the way we're going to do oh, this is proof by contradiction. We're going to assume the opposite of this, right? And then prove that that's absolutely ridiculous. Therefore, this must be true, okay? So first thing we're to do is say, assume the opposite, right? So assume that CBNs AE, BF, and CD are not concurrent. Why? Because we're doing proof by contradiction, and you first start out by proving, or you, start, you assume the opposite of what you want to prove, and we're going to prove that that's ridiculous. Therefore, this must be true. Okay. So I'm going to prove that this is ridiculous. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, if CD isn't concurrent, which is what I assume, right, then there should be some line that I can draw that does go through G, right? Yep. There should be. Let's create that line. I'm going to switch to pens. Can you still see it? Yep. Okay. Let C 
G. Next letter is H, because I haven't used that yet. But I'm not going to use H, because H and I are sideways of each other. right? It gets confusing. So I'm going to go straight to J. Also, it's funny. CPJ exists. And I got to tell where it intersects. It also intersects here, right? So A, D, J, B exists, right? Okay. I got to tell where it intersects. Otherwise, I could just do C, G, and then J stop right here. I want it to go all the way there. So I just wrote where it intersects. Okay. So what we're going to do is say, look, if this is concurrent, right? We said it was, right? And these two all connect at the same spot. Then by Seba's theorem, how this divides the triangle up should equal 1, right? The thing I create is concurrent. So Seba's theorem says that AJ times BJ times ED, you got it, times CE times CF times AF is all going to equal 1. So I'm going to say by Seba's theorem. And this is the only way to do this? Mm -hmm. AJ over BJ, right? AJ over BJ. What's the next segment? I'm using big letters. BE B -E over CE. What's next? Keep going. CF over AF. Equals 1, right? That's Seba's theorem, right? If they're concurrent, which the ones I drew are, right, then the way it divides the triangle up will equal 1. Yep. Now, this is a problem. Because we were told the way this guy divides the triangle up equals 1. Okay. So I'm going to substitute letters, big letters, for little letters. Instead of writing little a, what am I going to write? <coughs> AD. AD. This was given to us, right? I'm just substituting letters. Instead of little b, what am I going to write? Remember, little b was all the way from here to here. db. Right? db, or bd, right? Instead of little c, what am I going to write? E. Okay, notice the rest is all the same, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to go c, e, and c, f, and a, f. And that was given to me, right? That was given. Yep. Now, here's the thing, kids. If this equals 1, and that equals 1, they should equal each other, right? So I'm going to write this again. And you're going to go by their bases this time. So they should equal each other. This should equal this. Really? I'll show you what happens. Or if he just doesn't give a shit about what I have to say. That's not it. Okay. So they should equal each other. Now, here's the magic happen. <laughs> Don't both sides have a CF over AF? Mm -hmm. yes. And it's multiplying, right? Mm -hmm. So when I divide by that, if I divide by CF over AF to both sides, well, that becomes 1, right? And when I divide this side by CF over AF, what's anything divided by itself? 1. Then you're doing the same thing for B, C. Yep. But it wouldn't be. Like Not for this, though, right? Yeah. So what do we get? We get 1 times that, which is just AJ over BJ so you can. equals AD over BD. And this is a problem. Contradiction. No, this cannot be true. No. Contradiction, right? So, why is this a contradiction? You don't need to know this for the quiz. After this, you can say, no. therefore, our assumption is false, and the C-beans are concurrent, right? But here's why it's false, okay? Here's why it's false. This is saying that the way we cut this line segment up, AJ and BJ, should be the same as cutting up AD to BD. And this is silly. If you have a line segment, and you want to cut it up into 1 versus 2, is there another point that I can cut that in that will also be 1 versus 2? So I want you to cut this board, right, into 1 versus 2. Yeah. But I don't want you to cut it there. I want you to cut it somewhere else. So we just proved this. You can't, right? We can't. Easier example. Cut a board in half. Cut a board in half. Is there more than one way to cut a board in half? No. No, yes. right? Oh, well, through the middle. It, this is a thin board. Stop it, okay? So there's only one point you can cut it in, right? So how can we have AJ and BJ cut this side the same way AD and BD do? It doesn't make sense, right? You can't cut it in two different spots and have it come out the same way, you know, one-third and two-thirds or something, right? You can't. So this is a contradiction. So J would have to be the same thing as D. And if J is the same thing as D, right, then that means D was concurrent, right? So we say, therefore, our assumption That's true. Is false. was false. Oh. So what we said was false. It is false that they're not concurrent. So what's the opposite of being not concurrent? They they are. Are concurrent. What must be true is the opposite, that they are. So, so therefore, Cbians of triangle ABC 
or whatever it says at the top, right? C means A, E, B, F, and C, D are concurrent. Oh, so for this yeah. problem, you want to prove they contradict each other just so you can say that they are concurrent? Yep. That's proof by contradiction. It's the easiest way to do it. So it's a weird proof by contradiction because you have this weird, like, segment. That, like, the contradiction's not obvious unless I point it out, right? But that's the idea. So what do we do? We said we'll assume the opposite, yeah. right? If that's not concurrent, then there must be some line that is, right? So I made it. Ah. So by Seba's theorem, these should produce a triangle cut up that equals 1, right? But the problem is, is that the original also equals 1. And I show that, look, that means that these two are equal. And if those are equal, that means I cut the board in two different places, and it cut it to the same length. How can you do that? How can you take a board and cut it in two different spots and have it still be the same length? Right? You cut it one way, it's going to cut it into two thirds and one third. Right? You cut it over here, it's not going to be two thirds and one third. Right? It can't be the same ratio. That's ridiculous. So they must be the same line. And if it's the same line, then that line actually does go through three. And I win. Yeah. So what my question is, is if we're not going to finish this, I can't hear you. What? what does concurrent mean? Concurrent means they all intersect at one point. So concurrent. Concurrent lines, right? <laughs> so offer concurrent lines, so not concurrent lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Brainerd. So just to make sure that I have the Seabus yeah. thing theorem down, you just did you take like all the segments that are on the triangle together? Yeah, Seabus theorem says that, uh -oh. that the segments it's cut into, if you go around in a circle, they'll all multiply one. Oh my right? god, just this is so smart. What's your oh. question? Okay, um, how if we're not gonna finish this, how are we supposed to pass? Well, I explained that earlier, but there's a video online. Also, everything in here is literally the stuff we've been doing two weeks ago. Not just like, <laughs> not, not not algebra, not algebra. It's like, but I changed the numbers. It's literally, it's literally, the, it's, it's the exact same thing. All I did was make a different triangle, and you're proving the exact same thing. The words are the same, everything's the same. So we have done all of this before, twice. Now, those last two were hard. Those last couple were hard. Let's do something much easier. What's your question? <laughs> yeah, the next one is much easier. We love proving medium. Damn, imagine being low people. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, quiet. I need to hear code, but you raise your hand. Um, you then have to put the smaller because you made the previous term converse. Like, yeah, I just did a substitution, right? I switched out little guys for these guys. But you, you don't, you're not supposed to do it the other way. I think the short answer is no. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Four. This is an easier one. Okay. First of all, we need to create medians. What's a median? Comes off the midpoint. Vertex the midpoint. So let's draw some in. I'm gonna go and call this a midpoint. Right. Every line has a midpoint somewhere. Right. Let's call this a midpoint. And then we're always allowed to connect dots, right? So I'm going to say that AD is created. So let AD exist and have it cut the opposite side into two equal parts. So I'm just going to write that CD congruent to BD. So create AD such that CD is congruent to BD, right? Create a median, basically, right? Now I'm going to do this again for every side. So I'm going to create this guy's median. Right, midpoint to vertex. I'm going to call that E. So let BE exist. And it cuts this into two equal pieces. What are the equal pieces? C E E A. C E congruent to A E. You got to do E A. Just in the game. All right, now I'm not going to assume they all intersect at one point, right? So I'm going to draw mine purposely off. You don't have to, but I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to prove that this actually does go through the middle, but we're going to assume for now it does. No proof by contradiction or anything. It does or doesn't? Well, we don't know that it does. That's what we're going to prove. So I didn't want to draw it as if it did. But if, if I were to draw it accurately, it would. When we draw it, should we try it? No, it doesn't matter. You can have them connect up beforehand or not. I'm just showing that we're going to prove that, so I'm not assuming it. <laughs> so I created CF and AF. Very good. Confused. So I just created some medians, right? And now we're almost done. Because now I know what the pieces of the triangle equal, right? What does AF equal? Yeah. It's the same, right? And so on and so forth. So I'm ready to set up my, my thing, right? My SIVAs, right? 
and then I'll switch stuff out. Let me show you. I'm going to do AF over BF, right? I'm just going around the triangle, oh, like we were talking about, right? And I'm going to multiply by, uh, Justice, what's the next two that I have to do? BD and CD. Yep. BD over CD. And again, keep going. What's the next? CE and EA. Right. Or AD. I'm going to prove that equals 1, right? And if it equals 1, then I win, right? Yes. Because that means they're concurrent. If I see this theorem is converse, yeah. you're going to use the converse a lot more. So how do I know that equals 1? Well, isn't AF the same thing as BF? Yes. So I can write that as AF over AF, right? And isn't BD the same thing as CD? Yes. So I can just write it as BD over BD. So that's, they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. I told this one was equal, right? Then CE is the same as EA, is a, as AE, so then CE is the same. all equal. And now look, what's anything divided by itself? Oh, one. one. So they all cancel each other out after. So what's one times one times one? Oh, now we're not done, because that's not what they want us to prove, right? Oh, they want to make sure you prove it. Now we say, if the segments all equal one, then by Siva's theorem's converse, the lines must be concurrent, and we win. So, so, so you're basically converse. done, but you're not done at the same time. Yeah, exactly. We have one last thing. By th Siva's theorem converse, converse. right? Is one thing watching Medians you do this, and then it's another thing doing it? Of A, B, C are concurrent. But there you go. Merry Christmas. That's it. We love medians. Congruent segments are great. Don't yeah. put your finger on the paper. Yeah. What's your question? Nothing. You sure? What's okay. the, no, I know it's Siva's theorem. The converse says. Like, Let me just say it. Siva's theorem says that if they're concurrent, then they all multiply to 1, right? Yeah. Converse says if they all multiply to 1, right? Then they must be concurrent, right? Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Because that allows us to substitute uh, BD for BD, or CD for BD. You see what I'm saying? Right? Because I know they're the same, I can switch out CD for BD. It's by subs. No. I think you're getting confused because I'm showing less force than you're used to doing, which is all the time. Okay. So, number five. <laughs> Tab theorem. Mr. Yep. Can I go to that? Yes, you may, just not name. here. All right, so tab theorem, triangle angle bisector ah! theorem. It says that when you have a triangle and you have an angle bisector, right? That's what they gave us, right? AD bisects this angle, so it cuts into two equal pieces, right? It says that the sides of the angle you cut will be proportional to the bases, okay? Now, good news, bad news. You're probably thinking, oh, similar triangles, right? We'll get proportional sides, right? You're never going to prove these ones similar. We only have one set of angles. We need two at least, right? So what we need to do is we need to actually draw a line to create another triangle. And it takes two lines to do it. The first line, we're going to make parallel, because parallel lines create angles, right? Oh. And we want angles. So what I'm going to do is, where is Saddam? Over the rainbow. OK, I don't have Saddam anymore. I have this. OK, so we're going to create a line that's parallel to either side. This? You can choose either or. Do you want to make a line parallel to this guy or parallel to this guy? X or Y? What do you want to do? X. X. Okay. So parallel to this, right? I'm just going to slide it down this way, and then I'm going to draw my line. It doesn't have to actually be parallel, right? We're just going to say let it be. All right? So I'm going to say that's parallel to this. Oh, it's just the one where you have to do all the ones around. Oh. No, 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 no. We're not there yet. Oh. And then you got to make the. And now I'm going to extend the angle bisector, and that's going to make a triangle with the green one, right? Yes. So I'm going to extend this guy. Right? So, in theory, this green line goes off further into point Q or something, and where they intersect is a separate point, point, I don't know, L. Okay? Don't worry about it. All that I need that for is so when I say let there be lines, I can tell you what they are. So I'm going to let this guy, that's line B, Q, or B, L, Q, it goes through L and then on to Q. After I write this down, you won't need Q anymore, don't worry. It goes, it intersects with L, right? And it keeps going on to Q. Here. Yeah. Q's over here. Okay. So, BLQ and have it be parallel. What line was it parallel to? The uh, AC. 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 Yeah. And we're going to extend this guy. So, we're going to let this guy exist. That's line ADL. Yep. Right? Q's over here. So, I just created those. Now, the point of doing this is parallel is so we can look for alternate interior angles or cap. It's going to be alternate. All right, so 
these two triangles we're going to get similar. So how is that angle going to end up over here? We have two oh. parallels and a transversal. The angle is zero. Interior. Alternate interior angles. Yeah. Do you see how they're on opposite sides of the transversal? But they're also inside. And inside the parallels, yeah. they're right. alternate, opposite sides, anterior, inside, right? So this angle and this angle will be together. Right. Now Can this you is do great. the vertical angles? Yeah, we'll get there. My alternate interior angles, Nero. CAD congruent to angle BLD. Okay? And then Kayla's right. We can do vertical angles here and here, right? Does it matter, though? Yeah, it does, because we need two angles to prove they're similar, right? So there's my two sets. You could have also got these two by alternate interior, right? Two parallels with the transversal, right? I like using vertical. By vertical angles theorem, angle CDA is congruent to angle BDL. This guy, right? Now we've got two angles, so we know that these two triangles are similar. Wow. Right? By angle, angle. Triangle ACD is similar to triangle, let's match up our letters. Angle A in this triangle is going to go with what in this triangle? L. L. C is unknown, so it's going to go with the unknown here, B. And D is going to go with itself because of vertical. 100% of the time, if they're vertical, they're going to go together, right? So we know that. Now this is great, because now if we have similar triangles, we can match up stuff by CSP, right? We'll get A over B together, and then we'll get uh, X and we don't have a Y, right? Y is over here. How do we get Y onto this triangle? Um, what do you see? Uh, isosceles. Isosceles triangle, right? Yeah. This big guy is an isosceles triangle because the two angles are the same. Now, is it by the theorem or the converse that these sides converse. are the same? Converse. The converse, because we start with the angles okay. and get the sides. The way I remember that is isosceles triangle theorem starts with an isosceles triangle, right? Two sides the same, and gets you the angles. The reverse is I have the angles and it gets you the sides. So I'm going to say that this side, AB, oh, by isosceles triangle theorem, right? Converse. AB is congruent to BL. And that means that BL must equal what? What same letter? Why? Why? I asked the question. All right, so this is why. Why, why do you have that? Now, now that they're similar, when I do CSP, they're going to match up. So by do not leave until the bell rings. By CSP, let's match them up. AC and LB should be congruent, right? Or should be proportional. AC is this guy, that's X, right? And LB is Y. So X and Y go together. So X over Y. CD and BD. CD is A, DD is B. Yeah. And we win. That's it? That's it. Oh, I'm sorry, you couldn't see. By CSP, I matched up these letters, right? To the little guys. That's five. Well, like, what if I just turned it in, even though not all of it's about? All right. Oh, well, I didn't finish the whole packet. I'm going to do the rest of this review after school at some point. Once kids are all gone, I'll just record me going through it. But there's already the full review up online right now. I did first hour, and where they stopped, since I had second hour to prep, I just kept recording, and I did the rest of the packet. That's but I'll be doing it again all at once. It'll be much faster because I don't have kids asking questions, right? So I'll be able to run through it, and you won't have to like scroll through the video as much. But that's already on there, even if it takes me till like seven o'clock tonight to have time to record. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Um, but that's the plan. Um, good news, bad news is that the rest of this packet, up until these guys, we've done in class multiple times. These guys we have not. So, so the idea. Quiz. But no, I might have one or two. You are praying these are on here. Let me show you why. What, if you're not gonna what kind of center must G be? In center. In center, which means this is a radius, right? Yep. And that's a radius. So if that's five, what's this? Five. Five, good. And don't radii always go 90 degree to the side? Yeah. Yes. So these are right triangles, aren't they? Here and here. Yep. So if that's five and that's 12, what's this? Well, we can do PFAC, right? 17. 25 plus yep. 144 is 169. What's the root of 169? 13. 13. So this whole thing's six, 13. If that's five and that's 13, what's X? PFAC. 13. It's going to be, hold on, hypotenuse is 13, leg. 5 is a leg, so this guy must be, what? 12. 12. You can do PTAC oh. and figure that out. They're congruent triangles, right? How do I figure out this guy? It's a right angle. I figure out the hypotenuse here, right? You see what I'm saying? 
one. Let's talk about this. These are medians. So if that's five, what's that? Ten. Ten. Yay. If that's six and a half, this Can is? Thirteen. Thirteen. Can that one be on the test? If these are medians, it's midpoint to vertex, right? So that's a midpoint. Yeah. So these are both the same. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If these are both 13, these angles are both the same. And it's equidistant to the side, so it's on the perpendicular bisector, which means these are right angle triangles, and you can figure that out. It's 12 and 12, which means it's 24. And that's legal for me. So you're praying those are on there. You're welcome. Try the examples at home, the homework I gave you, and this, and see what you get. Do you if you have questions, email me. Do you grade our homework based on if it's right or wrong, or if we have tried it? It depends on the assignment. Like this assignment. What do you mean? The one you gave us to yesterday. Uh, that'll be unattempted. Uh, but I highly encourage you to attempt it because it will help you a lot on the quiz. 